Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to earnings call Q2 FY24 for Lancer Container Lines Limited, hosted by Monarch Network Capital. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Priya Darshi Srivastava from Monarch Network Capital. Thank you and over to you, sir. Thank you, Sagar. Good evening, everyone. On behalf of Monarch Network Capital, I welcome you all to Lancer Container Lines Q2 and H1 FY24 earnings call. Uh, today, representing Lancer Container, today we have with us Mr. A.K. Chataiwala, Chairman and Managing Director, Mr. Prafal Jain, Executive Director. Uh, now I hand over the floor to Mr. Chitaiwala and Prafal, sir, for their opening re remarks and outlook on business. Over to you, sir. Thank you, Priyadarshi. Thank you, Munaj, for arranging this earning call. We are happy to have the conversation with the shareholders to discuss the matters. Last, I just want to brief you in terms of the financial performance, which has been portrayed and as per 30th September 2023, our revenue from operation stood at 1,663 million in this quarter, which is a steady increase in terms of demand of our services and reduction in the freight charges. Our EBITDA remained in line, but we have shown a growth in terms of half yearly performances, which is increased by 15.63% from 453 million in H1 FY23 to 524.50 million H1 FY24. That stood at 142.07 million in quarter two FY24 and 283.27 million H1 FY24. The margins, bet margins grew by 156 basis point and by 222 basis point in Q2 FY24 and H1 FY24 respectively. This is just a brief, we have added around 610 TUs as new additional capacity for the container. The total capacity has been reached to 15,181 TUs as on 30th September 2023. We can kindly proceed with the questions as we can discuss all those matters, which is which are all queries from the shareholders. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone phone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of uh, Lakshmi Chalwadi from Capital Square. Please go ahead. Hello. Good, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Lakshmi Chalwadi from Capital Square. My yeah. question is, as our EBITDA margin is being volatile from 14.6% this quarter versus 10% year on year and 17.1% quarter on quarter, what has for you should the sustainable EBITDA margin if you compare from last to last two years, our beta margin has shown a consistent growth coming from 7.5% reaching to 9% and 10%. And right now it has been on 11 to 12 to 13%. This is the sustainable margin which we can able to see 12 to 13%. We can see drastic fluctuation in terms of beta margin because new areas of operation which has been catered to our kitty now like uh, new uh, new areas where we have entered for our NGOCC operations like Africa and Latin America, where we have a better margin in terms of these services which we provide. So this is one of the aspects. Apart from that, this basically depends on demand and supply, but we foresee approx 13% of margin, which is our sustainable, and are somewhere around 50 or 100 basis point growth on these margins with the addition which we are planning to do. Okay. And how many new regions were able to add from this last quarter? See, we have we have added 
Africa than Latin America. These are the new destinations. We have a proposed destination in terms of Mediterranean region, but looking into this Hamas uh, and Palestine issues, we have stopped ourselves to enter on those areas, and we are a bit cautious in looking to those expansion plans. So once it has been all normalized, then we can obviously look into all those models. Okay, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Prashant Shah from Investor. Please go ahead. No. Hi, sir. Uh, my question is the company had raised uh, 30 million USD through FCCB. Sir, can you please let us know how the amount will be utilized over the period of time, next few months or year? Yeah. So this 30 million FCCB has been raised primarily for utilization for my wholly owned subsidiary Lancia. And the uh, project is for the purchase of containers. So we have already given the uh, order to the suppliers of the containers and most of the containers we have already received into the book, which has been deployed for the services which we provide through these. Uh, okay, sir. And sir, one additional question. Uh, sir, your views like on the progress of the uh, Dubai subsidiary Lancia, which you said, when are you likely, when is the uh, top line, when will we get to see on this? You want to ask for Lancia or what? Yeah, yeah. Basically, you said that this will be used for Lancia. So, like, right. I just wanted to understand, like, uh, when will the contribution will be reflecting yeah. in the top line? See, we already have started the operation because these containers, they have a three months or four months delivery period once they have procured and these are all new containers. So, already some of the containers are in line and already Lancia growth can be monitored through the revenue which they are doing earlier and right now. But complete growth you can able to see post 20, March 26, 24. Okay, sir. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Amok from Igdanta Investments. Please go ahead. Hello. Hello, sir. Yeah. Um, my question is, can we expect our interest rates expenses to go down due to this conversion of bonds? Yeah, of course. See, as per the accounting standard, we have to follow what are the norms. Though it's a zero coupon bond, but in our books, we have to uh, take into consideration 4% rate of interest till that time bonds are not converted. So once these bonds are converted, that there's a reverse uh, entry for this interest which has been charged to the books of account. So going forward, if the complete bond is converted, then the reversal of the interest should be there into the books of account. And there's a less liability in terms of the interest. Though there's no outflow of the interest, but that is more like a notional cost to us. I hope I answer your query. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, do you have any more follow-up questions, Samu? Uh, not yet. All right. Participants are requested to press star and one to join the question queue. The next question is from the line of Vaishali Parker Kumar from Vihan Investments. Please go ahead. Um, Good evening, sir. Thanks for taking my question. What is the status of our FCCB? You have mentioned that you have converted worth rupees 238 crore of bonds. So how many have left and uh, is there any conversion going to take place in near future? Yeah, so we have total 300 bonds which has been issued to the bond holders. Out of this 300, uh, 238 has been converted. Right, so uh, not 285. Right? 185 has been converted. It's uh, 115, which is pending for conversion. So we have till now not received any request from the bond holder for further conversion. But I am anticipating that if there is any request coming into the picture, uh, then we can duly intimate the stock exchanges and put this request for the conversion. Okay, so how it goes? Like you know, it means. Uh, uh, can we say that you know by uh, by year end or by end of FY24 we can convert the whole FCCB if required, and then uh, our uh, our you know debt will be zero, and the way you said that you know FCCB's interest we can reverse. 
is that so yeah so see the bond holders generally as per the offering circular they have to put a request but based on their uh, scenario looking to the scenario they have put up the request i am as i am uh, assuming that till the end of uh, uh, 24 Quarter, quarter of 24 march 24 we are able to convert entire bonds okay cool. if we receive okay. the request yeah i'll follow up for the question thank you the next question is from the line of prashant shah from investor please go ahead uh yeah sir i have one last question uh so you have recently acquired transco logistics so just wanted to understand can you throw some more light on this deal like how will this deal benefit the company thank you yeah good evening this is mr satyavala here so basically what we are doing is we are going the organic way by growing as well as the inorganic way so we are trying to acquire certain companies which has the potential to grow faster and uh, within 2 or 3 years uh, give uh, give an input as to the top line and the profit of the company now this transfer company we have acquired 60% of the company in this and uh, this company has come and joined lancer and they'll be sitting with lancer's office which is going to be a separate entity for transco it's going to be a separate profit and loss account out here it's going to be like a subsidy for them and they will be working for vessel operations which is a new venture that we are starting out here and the freight forwarding in this company so we foresee in about 2 years time uh, a substantial amount of growth in this company sure sir thank you very much thank you participants may press star and 1 to join the question queue the next question is from the line of padmaja from parmeshwari adv please go ahead uh uh thanks for taking my question so can you throw some light on the uh, progress of our uh, dubai subsidiary land here on when it will start contributing to our top line yeah good evening good evening so let me tell you lancer is a 100% subsidiary of lancer this company was started 22 years back and it is doing quite well if you see the balance sheet it's growing really good now what is happening is lancer is acquiring certain companies in dubai itself new companies are being formed under lancer there's one company which is being formed by the name of argo argo this is already in operation and let me tell you one thing is the moment we started this company about 3 months back this office which we took was about a 1000 square foot office in dubai that became small and now we've taken a 2500 square foot office Uh, which is being done up and most probably by december 1st or by january 1st this office the people are going to be shifted to the new office a bigger office so you can see the growth pattern in 6 months time itself that they are moving to a bigger office that is one part the second part is lancia has come into a joint venture for owning vessels also in dubai the company is already been formed in dubai again an office has been taken 2500 square foot office has been taken and it is being done up most probably we feel that we should start the operation by january 1st of january for the shipping also okay great thank you so much sir thanks thank you the next question is from the line of bhakti yoza from capital square please go ahead Uh, good evening everyone uh, what is the status on the mlo side of our dubai subsidiary are we on the tracks in terms of starting mlo operation in fi24 yes good evening see as i have told you we have already got into a joint venture for owning vessels now the time frame that we have given ourselves the office is the company has been formed lancia is a 51% uh, ownership in that company we have already taken an office there company is already registered the office is being done up by 1st of january we have already applied for uh, for sending the funds from here to buy the vessel and uh, we have already informed the ad we have already taken the permission from them so most probably we feel that by 1st of january we should start those operations also 
ओके सर सर यू आर ऑल्सो प्लॅनिंग टू एंटर इन टू लिक्विड कंटेनर्स इवन कॅन यू प्लीज गिव्ह सम लाईट अँड डिमांड अँड सप्लाय ऑफ दिस सेगमेंट Can you please repeat this? You were also planning to enter into a liquid container. Yes. Let me tell you, liquid container, tank containers, we are planning to start tank containers. Uh, again, let me tell you, uh, we've already taken an office, a separate office uh, from Lancer, and the staff is being recruited. I think most probably by January, you will be seeing the tank containers, also some movement of tank containers happening. ओके सर थैंक यू थैंक यू द नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन इज फ्रॉम द लाइन ऑफ यश सचदेव फ्रॉम फिंट्रेस कैपिटल प्लीज गो है हाय सर गुड इवनिंग सो आई वाज जस्ट गोइंग थ्रू योर प्रेस रिलीज वेयर इन यू नो द मैनेजमेंट हैज डाइडेड फॉर अ टॉप लाइन ऑफ 10000 मिलियन बाय द एंड ऑफ एफ आई 24 एंड आई हैव इवन गोन थ्रू योर Q1 एंड Q2 रिजल्ट्स so i am not able to you know means uh, connect the dots in the first two quarters the top line that the company has clocked is nearly 320 crores 320 to 330 crores mm-hmm. wherein we are guiding you know 1000 cr achieving by end of this financial year so if you can sir you know just give us a, a, a sense of a road map wherein you know how the company is going to you know achieve this uh, aim what they have aimed for 1000 cr and also you know if you can just guide for the coming year that is fy25 wherein what company aims to you know clock on the terms of revenue and mm-hmm. even the beta margins in the pat mm-hmm. see we have projected and provided this guidance of 1000 crore turnover based on we are planning to start our vessel operations from september but unfortunately this has been delayed due to some regulatory payments right because as a part of my subsidiary globally i have to take the permission from my ad bank and then send the remittance from here so it has taken some time and now we are on the track so fortunately now we can able to fund the amount to my subsidiary and start the operation once this operation will be started i can see for the 35% growth in terms of my gross margin coming forward from this vessel operation so where this impact should be there in terms of turnover also the growth will be enormous in comparison second thing there is a sharp decline in terms of turnover because of freight rates which has come down drastically in past one year so this being a nature of demand and supply cannot be constant so but we keep keep our things safer in terms of venturing into new verticals where i can add some value to my turnover going forward with the new divisions like transco argo and other companies where we are doing the joint venture so parallelly crossing this 1000 crore turnover will be a quarter delay but it should going to achieve in coming uh, quarters what is the guidance provided okay okay so so that means you are guiding this for by q1 of fy25 yeah right right and so also you know for the coming year for fy25 you can give us a you know a sense means 1000 cr you are telling by q1 for the fy25 any particular number that the company is eyeing in terms of in terms of number i cannot quote but it's better to quote i you can see a growth of around 35 to 40% in terms of my total uh, capacity uh, and turnover okay okay right and this is you are talking on an annual basis right right yes right right done sir done thank you so much yeah thank you thank you before we take the next question we would like to remind participants that you may press star and 1 to join the question queue the next question is from the line of vaishali parker kumar from vihan investments please go ahead uh, thanks for the opportunity once again so i wanted to understand here like you know what would be the synergy with transco uh, jb jb into this particular company into which segment uh yeah yeah thank you vishali once again uh, see uh, transco they are already a build up network they have a set of clients big clients whom they are servicing like all cargo reliance there are lot of people tata they are servicing 
Coromandel Group. So in South, they have a very good presence in terms of their freight forwarding business. And so we have joined hands with them because we can foresee a growth in terms of what type of capital I'm infusing and what type of business they can get into the system. So it will be additional uh, flow of uh, revenue as well as profit with their joint hands. So we, they are, they are fully, fully operational in our office from 1st of December. The our entire team will be sitting in my office over here uh, with the entire division and we will be functioning at 60% of uh, the arrangement which we have done as per the announcement. Okay, so they are purely into freight forwarding and uh, they don't hold any uh, uh, containers or anything? Further. No, no, they don't hold, hold any containers. They are purely into freight forwarding and they have a expertise of vessel handling also, as mentioned by Mr. Chataiwala. So once our uh, process flow will be smooth and functional, then they will be doing some uh, sort of business in terms of vessel handling. And one more thing, like, you know, the way this Israel and Hamas war has initiated and taken place. So what, what is your view that, you know, has our any business has impacted due to this war? Are we, you know, uh, uh, sending uh, logistics in that particular route? Or, yes, are, and how do you see that, you know, in long term, how it is going to get impacted? So presently, we are not doing any business with Israel or any of those nations which is associated with this conflict. But uh, we have a plan to enter into material region through our subsidy Lancia, which as I told earlier also, it has been on a cautious note to first of all cross-check and then we look into the business going forward. Right now, we are not doing anything in terms of those areas. But of course, as the sentiment changes, there should be some type of uh, cautiousness we can, you can see into the market where we are also effectively watching. Okay, so uh, when earlier we were talking about the Mediterranean areas, uh, region to get entered, we will, uh, uh, for timing, we will keep a hold on that. And correct, correct. Yes. Everything settled, it will, you know, get into right. it. Okay. Right, yes, yes. Okay. Okay, sir. Thank you so much. That is so much. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. The next follow-up question is from the line of uh, Padmaja from Parmeshwari ADV. Please go ahead. Thank you for giving uh, me the opportunity. Uh, so, company has mentioned uh, that it has plans of 24,000 to use by FY24. And in this quarter, uh, you have added 610 to use. So, total is coming around 15,181 as on 30th of September. So, uh, so does that mean that in next two quarters you are going to add 8,000 to 9,000 TU in next two quarters? Right. See, this 24,000 TU which we have given as guidance is a consolidated numbers in terms of my subsidies and myself. We have already raised the FCCB amount and which has been pending delivery in terms of the containers which I have procured through the fund. Right. So, once this fund, which I am assuming, should be coming, uh, this, sorry, this container should be coming at the end of the uh, this uh, year, by December, then we can able to reach to that number which you are mentioning. Okay. Okay, sir. Thank you. That's it from my side. Thank you. Thank you. Participants may press star and one to join the question queue. The next question is from the line of uh, Mr. Priya Darshi Srivastav. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, sir. I have just a question that uh, we saw a sort of a subdued revenue in part. Uh, this was mainly because of the fallen uh, freight rates or there were some any other reasons to it? No, it's purely in terms of the fall in the freight rate because it directly affects the top line, but if you can see my bottom line or margins, so it's been kept uh, or it's been increasing constantly in terms of the business which I am acquiring and entering into. So yes, purely, yes, yes, sir. yeah, it's on because of the trade rate is caused down. Okay, okay. So what is your outlook for like uh, next uh, few months or something like uh, how you see the things from the industry perspective? Sir? See, what we personally feel is the way we are growing. The inaugural way, like we have about 
three or four companies which are going to start immediately so all the revenues and the profits will be added to it so we are very optimistic of our growth and uh, we see the markets are opening up also after the war also i think there will be a lot of uh, uh, people wanting exports and imports so we we find it very very you can say we are very optimistic about it okay okay sir thank you so much thank you participants are requested to press star and 1 to join the question queue the next question is from the line of uh, yain kapoor from who is an individual investor please go ahead hi sir good evening so my question is regarding the margin how much uh, uh, change in margin we expect once we are able to start our debt operations from january what what could be delta we could in for see on our container business of course mcc operations including the freight forwarding i can say around 13% margin we are having from this business uh, i am talking about the ebitda margins in terms of the vessel operation once it's going to start there should be around 30 35% of the gross margins coming on from that business So on a sustainable basis, if I com- compare all the business all together, we should be con- considerably making margins between 15 to 18 percent on the gross side. On the gross side. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Participants may press star and one to ask the question. As there are no further questions, I would now like to hand the conference over to the management for closing comments. Well, uh, let me tell you the way Lancer is growing. Like we've got about three three companies which are going to start. We are very confident that we should be growing, and your revenues and your profits should be increasing uh, many folds. That is what we feel, and uh, the team is also expanding. Now, tank containers are coming in. uh will be owning a vessel containers are increasing and another another company which has been set up in dubai so if you add everything i think uh, it's going to be really really positive about it we are very optimistic and very bullish about the company thank you also i just want to add that uh, being as a company looking into the micro level that is one aspect to look into that apart from the industry if you see on the macro level the industry is also growing on a enormous uh, growth where you can see lot of trade which has been coming government is doing lot of things in terms of logistic growth the cost of logistic which has been coming down going forward with government is planning the logistic corridors which are opening up so on a long term basis i can see there's a uh, there's a growth channel which has been established and we, as we are already into presence and have a older setup i think we will be in a better position to cultivate from this growth channel which are coming forward thank you so much sir so we have a, a follow up question from uh, amok so amok your line is unmuted uh Amok sir, your voice is not uh, that clear. Hello, can you hear me? It's better now. Yeah. 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 Uh, so one small question: uh, Are we still keeping uh, our target of twenty-four thousand by financial year twenty-five? Yes. 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 Okay. Thank you. Uh, we have. Uh, another question from uh, sahil gupta from finlex capital advisors uh, uh sir i want to know how, how many satellite offices we have in india and what is our employee strength and where all overseas i see you are expanding a lot in dubai and in african countries so 
So are we planning to open our own offices and deploy our own people or are we, work, we, we working through agents? See, we already have a setup in Dubai where I have we have our own people in terms of my subsidiary. We have a staff strength of somewhere around 20 people over there. We already have a staff strength of around 270 people in India and 14 branches across. It is all scattered to all the major port, port areas over here. So this is how the setup is as of now. I'm sorry if I missed out something in terms of your question. Can you please repeat? Yeah, and, and so in Africa also, you're planning to enter the African so market? Africa, Africa, we don't want to have our direct presence. It should be majorly catered to the agency. Okay. So the vessel which you're owning, this will it will be only a single vessel or you're planning to open multiple vessels and that will help to move the containers we basically? We start with one, then we, can, we have a plan to reach two, three or four vessels. Okay, and how are you going to help sell? How the, the depreciation other thing will not be too much on vessel owning or like was this since it's a new line of business for you? No, we have already see we have already identified the experienced staff in terms of vessel handling. We have one captain who has already joined hands with us and he is into the vessel operation since 30, 35 years. So he already in and out of the business has been known and there's already the calculation which works out in terms of having this vessel considering the depletion, all the expenses being chartering into. Sure. Thank you. Thank you so much. On behalf of Monarch Network Capital, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines. Thank you so much. Thank